so got to do some work on the smoker. Uh, I got to use it once and it started acting funny. And uh, it's an electric smoker, charbroil. I guess this is fairly common from what I see. And I apologize, it's a little dark in the garage, just kind of a dreary, rainy day. But uh, just wanted to show you this. You see right here where my thumb is. That's the contact that connects to the heating element inside your smoker. And this is, in my hand, is the thermostat bulb. If you see this bottom one here, it's burnt to a crisp. Um, there's the wire right in there, and uh, the element and stuff that, or the uh, the socket is completely gone. It started acting up. I noticed the little LED or uh, whatever that is. The bulb wouldn't light up to show me it was working, and I was struggling on a 45 degree today to keep it at 200. Well, that was why. Um, the other section here. Uh, I apologize if this is too close. It's hard to judge, but there is the wire and it's pretty well cooked on there. I'm gonna have to pry that off, but here's the where it plugs onto the elements. So my options were to, from Charbroil, buy their controller again, and it's like $40 and $10 to get it shipped. So 50 bucks, I only paid 96 bucks or something for the smoker, and then, you know, the, the little mods I've done to it, you know, a few bucks here and there, and it's like 50 bucks to make this smoke generator. Um, and have the same problem down the road because the parts do the same thing. I got about, uh, I don't know, two and a half, three years out of this thing before it went bad, and I've used it a lot, so I, I'm not complaining. But I'm trying to justify what I'm spending. Uh, so I decided I'm gonna go digital. If I'm gonna do this, uh, spend some money, I can always go back to this, the way I'm setting this up. I can go back to simple, which is why I bought this style. I want it simple. Um, what I got here real quick, this is a digital PID controller I got from Thermomart on, on the internet. Uh, you can get it through Amazon. It's about 50 bucks. Uh, it goes up to 572 degrees, I think. Comes with a temperature probe. It's a 30 amp built-in relay, so I can use this controller. And I got to get into the programming. I'll do that later in the video. I haven't done it yet. But this controller, um, you can set your parameters, your uh, hysteresis, so that when it kicks on and off, and help it keep a real exact temperature. Uh, it's got a little probe, and what I got here, uh, I do heating and cooling, and we use these as an air pickup tube for uh, air switches. I'm gonna use this to put my sensor probe in to protect it. Uh, I've got some 14.3 uh, SJOW cord. It's kind of like a heavy duty lamp cord. Uh, it's rated for 15 amps, which this thing, uh, uh, my element's 1500 watts, it draws uh, about 12.7 amps roughly. This draws 0.2 amps to run, and then uh, maybe a little more with the relay, I think. So I'm still well under 15 amps. I should be right around the 80% threshold continuous, which is code for electrical wiring. Uh, I've got a cord cap here, um, or well, you just call it a plug, that's your, your mail plug. Some loom clips to hold things together. I picked up a terminal strip, and I'm going to install that in this project box. I'm going to put the whole thing in this box, and uh, I'll mount it all inside of here. Uh, I'll recess the control in there, and that way I can put this terminal strip inside and make all my connections. Uh, most of the stuff uh, I get through uh, the wholesale house or you know electrical supply. Some of it I have at work. Um, just random things. I made some standoffs here. I want this box to not sit on top of my smoker here. So I'm gonna use standoffs to get three quarters of an inch or so up for airflow so it doesn't melt. This is insulated. It doesn't get super hot, but I just wanna take all the precautions I can. I'm gonna uh, build in a circuit breaker. I got a 15 amp, 120 volt circuit breaker. I'm gonna recess in the box here as well. Uh, these are called cord grips, and that's where our cords are going to come out for you know the one to plug into the wall, and the other one's going to go to the heating element. And then I'm going to use these lugs. That'll slide right on, hopefully. I think it's about the same size as this here. And then I'll tighten the little screw to hold it, and then I'll nut and bolt this in to my, my wiring, and that'll be shrink tube, covered up. So that way, that's how I make my connection, and if this doesn't work, or if I have to replace the element or something, cut the shrink tube back. Uh, unscrew the screws and replace the element. So I'm trying to think down the road because things do wear out. And then these are just, uh, you can use uh, self stick or I'm gonna use some screws and you put zip ties in there and I'm gonna use that to secure my, uh, my sensor wire here which I'm gonna insulate and run it down the back of the smoker here, similar to the probe one that I use right now for, uh, I actually put this in my meat but I, I store it right there. I wanna keep it again 
just off the back of this so it doesn't melt. So uh, I'll get back with you when I get more into this and start to, you know, I'll show you the progress along the way here as I cut holes and, and just basic mounting steps. I don't want to bore you with every single detail. And then if you have any questions on it, um, just message me in the comments down there and I'll do what I can to help you. Making some progress. Um, I wired up the uh, controller here and um, a couple words of caution. This shield that goes on the wiring here, uh, not very strong, it's just in a little piece of plastic. I kind of broke it off already, but fortunately it'll be enclosed so I won't need it. Uh, wiring's fairly straightforward. Um, I do recommend that you tin the end of your wires, you know, put some solder on them. They're going to be a little tight to get in those Phoenix connectors right there. I can tell you that because I struggled with it a little bit. So make sure they're in there, but, you know, uh, tighten them up nice and firm. They do tighten down well, but it just seems a bit wobbly with those little connectors on the board. So hopefully I didn't damage it, um, and just be careful when you do it. Uh, at this point, I, I told you I would just, uh, I'm not going to do this every step of the way, but I wanted to show you how it's going. These things here, by the way, uh, slide onto the back of the PID controller, and these will slide all the way forward, and that's what holds it in place up against the, the plastic here. So you got to take a screwdriver and lift this edge up, so it'd be the back edge, and hold it up, and they slide right off. Um, Again, I pre-wired it. It's just going to be easier for me when I go to my terminal strip here. Um, at this point, I've drilled all my holes, cut out for the PID controller, and I've mounted all my fittings, basically. i got my terminal strip, my 15-amp breaker, uh, two cord grips. This one's going to come out the side and run down the side into our heating element. And this one's going to be where our uh, power cord comes in. I don't know how well you can see that here. There is a, a pop-out breaker here. That was a little fun to get in there. And then on the side here, I've got one more little hole with a plastic grommet, and that's where the sensor lead's going to come out. And I'm going to run that down the side and, and put a new hole about midway down somewhere in the, the back of this thing for my sensor probe. So that's where we're at. I've been out here, I don't know, probably an hour and 20 minutes messing around. Um, I do have it mounted also. I got my little standoffs I showed you. Those are just stainless steel hydraulic tubing I cut up. It was a scrap. Pulled it out of the garbage and cut them up three quarters of an inch. And that's just to give me some airspace here so I'm not sitting right on the top of the smoker in case it gets too hot. So uh, that's where we're at. Next step of the process are steps. Got this installed. Like I told you those just slide back on, nice and easy. It pulls it nice and tight on there. Looks pretty good. Um, I drill a hole for the sensor well. Let's see if you can see see the little uh, little silver thing right there. There's my sensor. I got it right kind of in the middle. I'm hoping uh, you know the racks don't interfere with it or anything. Keep it short. Keep it from getting dripped on. And what I did is I ran it around the side here. Uh, loomed it like I uh, was mentioning in the intro of the video and then I use these little uh, tie straps they just screw in and then you take that zip tie and I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this thing in in a minute that's the sensor and then it just that's the little uh, air tube I used and it just slips in there tight and then when I I zip it, everything will be in place. Then I'll get on to finishing up the wiring. Wired in some stuff. Basically, power wire coming into the terminal strip, and I got the uh, PID unit tied out. Again, uh, more trouble with these terminals, so I just can't, couldn't keep them, the wires tight. You know, I start pulling on them to, to set them, not uh, yanking or anything, just, you know, wiggling them to put them in place, and they keep coming back out. Um, I finally got them. I think they're all nice and solid because I don't need a loose connection burning this thing up. Uh, moving on down here where the old uh, thermostat slash power supply plugged in down here. I'm using these lugged terminals. I just tighten them on and I'm going to um, insulate them. But then I've got the nice ring terminal here or the hole and I'll put a, a bolt in it. That one moves, which kind of concerns me a little, but I ohmed it out, and uh, I got good resistance across the, the heater, so as long as I'm not touching anything in here, I should be in good shape. Definitely insulate those well, however you choose to do it. Uh, I am by no means an electrician. Um, 
So uh, what I'm doing here is at my own risk. So definitely think about it. If you're going to do it, insulate those really well. Now I've wired the element in. I don't know how well you can see this again. Um, here, let's lighten that up for you a little bit. So, ground wire, then I ran my uh, hot and ground, and then down the side, clamped with loom clips, and then it's insulated with shrink tube for now. I gotta come up with something better. Um, I gotta see if everything even is gonna work, and in the meantime, I'll order up some different stuff. But that's the next step. And then the, uh, the sensor's all complete back here. Just loomed. I'm hoping it's off the uh, body of the smoker enough where it's not going to melt anything. Uh, it never gets hot enough where you can't touch it or anything at all. So um, I'm hoping it's good. Time to put the power cord on and program this thing see what happens. Complete and functioning. Uh, I'm going to have to work on uh, calibrating and I got it programmed and stuff and that all works good. But it, uh, it seems to be about, I don't know, I'm guessing here from my little gauges, I'm reading about 175, 180 there. And you see what this thing's reading. Uh, the temperature sensor is in the back and it's just a little bit lower than this right in here. That one's in the very top in the vent hole. Um, and it always reads a tad high anyway. Uh, but I still, you know, if you do the averages, we're quite a bit off there. So I don't know if I need a different style probe or what. Uh, but everything else programming works easy seems to work um, got to put a nice long cord on it too uh, that's quite a bit longer than the other one well part of that is because it's up higher too I didn't want to go too long because you don't want to lose your ampacity by running that long cord but it kicks right in um, I got it set with a five degree hysteresis I might change that to uh, a little bit more maybe a 10 or a 12 15 um, so I'll try and keep my temperature there, but now, uh, now the learning curve's got to come in. I got to get used to this thing. I got to, you know, maybe experiment with the probe placement and things. Uh, but it does work. Took me, I don't know, three hours or so, and uh, that was having some issues. So it's not not a bad project. And then we'll see how it works down the road here uh, once I can get some meat in it. Probably be next weekend or something. But that's what it looks like, and it does work. Um, all these parts were available, um, most of them were on eBay and the rest I got at electrical supply um, through my employer, I mean that's what I do. So That's it though, my Charbroil analog smoker is now converted to digital and I just got to work the bugs out. So um, I'll have another video maybe down the road when I get this thing running right. Thanks for watching.